This is a quick video over emulsion polymerization. So let's say we have some liquid. Let's say this liquid is actually H2O. H2O. Now we add in a monomer. This monomer is hydrophobic and we mix it. So what we'll get is droplets of the monomer. Now these droplets will actually come back together and make much bigger droplets. Much bigger droplets, but we'll keep these little small ones. So what we get this, if we add in an emulsifier, and all an emulsifier is something that wants to interact that wants to interact with both liquids, the monomer and the water. So if we have something that's hydrophilic and hydrophobic, such as a a fat with a polar head, we'll get an emulsion. So now we keep these little droplets. We keep these little droplets, and actually what I'll do is whoops. See, so now we have our our droplets. Just erase these other ones. Whoops. And of course, we'll still have some of these big ones. Some of these big ones. And I'll still also have the emulsifier around them. So I'll just draw some emulsifiers around them. Pull our heads. Uh, okay, so now we have our, our emulsion. So now what we want to do is add in an initiator. And this initiator will want to be in the water mainly. However, every occasionally it will diffuse through the the emulsifier into the monomer. However, it still wants to stay mostly in the water. So the probability of the polymer reaction occurring is based off of will the initiator touch the monomer. Now there's a lot more area around all these other little micelles. These are micelles. Micelles. There's a lot more area around all these micelles than there is around this giant monomer droplet. Monomer droplet. Up. Oh, that. Oops. Should be a space between there. So we have this. We have this reaction. Now, again, this this initiator is much more likely to interact with these micelles than it is this much larger uh, monomer droplet, just due to the sheer number of surface area for the micelles versus the monomer droplet. So what we get is we actually get reactions occurring inside the micelles and not inside the monomer droplet. So if we were to actually graph, if we were to graph the reaction rate, the reaction rate versus time, what we'd see is the monomer gets consumed inside the micelles. So now these are all these are all polymers. And what happens is all the monomer gets consumed inside the micelles and it just kind of starts to level off. Now what occurs next is the monomer inside inside this big droplet diffuses out and diffuses outwards into these micelles so the polymerization still occurs. So we still have a reaction occurring. However, this gets smaller and these get much bigger. They get bigger, they all get bigger as this one gets smaller and smaller and then there comes a point where this is no longer here. So that just disappears and our reaction slowly dies off. So what we have are these different phases. We have phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one is when the polymerization is taking, is, is occurring inside the micelle and consuming only monomer that was previously in the micelle. Now that monomer gets consumed completely and then you have to wait for it to diffuse out of the giant monomer droplet into these other micelles. So that's what phase two is. It diffusing from the giant monomer into the micelles. And then finally phase three is just all the monomer is being consumed. There is no longer a giant droplet providing monomer. It's all inside or in the liquid slowly being consumed until there's no more monomer. So that's the very basic premise of emulsion polymerization.